Welcome to Drive for Service, a podcast to inspire a higher quality of service. Hello, a very warm welcome to our next episode of Drive for Service podcast. I'm Amy Moron, and I'm here with my very good friend of 14 years, David O'Connor, co-owner of Medler Restaurant in Chelsea. Hello, everyone. David and I have worked for many years in customer service, and most of those together in restaurants. And we've always had a huge interest in the mix of ingredients that create an exceptional level of customer service. Today, we're here to learn from the industry's best how we deliver a level of service that isn't just good, but goes above and beyond. David, would you like to introduce today's guest? Sure. I'm delighted to welcome our Master of Culinary Arts, Daniel Crump. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Nice to be here. Hello. Great. <laughs> So Daniel, tell us about your career story. How did you start in this industry? Uh, well, I started young. So I was 14, uh, 14 years of age. Um, and I was working um, as a kitchen porter. I was really keen to work um, as, as soon as I was old enough to. I think that mm. obviously the laws have changed now. But back then, at 14, you were allowed to go and work. Um, and uh, it was a, a local hotel. Mm. So I was a kitchen porter at a local hotel. Absolutely loved it. Um, and I decided... Um, to my last two years of schooling, um, secondary education, mm -hmm. I did a sort of trial course. Um, and it was a course where the last, uh, last day of every week, so it was either a Friday or a Tuesday, actually, um, you would, instead of going to school, you would go to um, a different hotel or a different restaurant um, and shadow a different maitre d', a different restaurant manager, a different bar manager. And so I took up the opportunity. To, to sort of trial this. I mean, the other students did, you know, different, um, mm -hmm. uh, went down different avenues. But because I was already working as a kitchen porter in this hotel, I, I thought, well, actually, let's let's go front of house and let's have a look at it. And whereabouts was this? Uh, this is in Torquay, so I'm from okay. Devon. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I did. And I did it for, obviously did it for the last two years of my, my schooling. And I absolutely loved it. I mean, I really loved it. Um, what I had to do was shadow the, the, the maitre d' or the restaurant manager that I was with for the day. Um, and then when I went back to school, I, we would sit and I'd have to talk about what I learned, what I liked, what I didn't like. And there wasn't much that I didn't like, to be fair. I, I just absolutely loved it. So um, I knew at that point, this is, this is what I want to be doing. But I also loved working. So um, I, as well as working at the hotel, I also worked in a Chinese takeaway, our local Chinese takeaway, um, for well, three, four years. Um, as many as many evenings as I possibly could, um, and I absolutely, really, I absolutely loved it. I mean, it's a, a family-run uh, Chinese takeaway. It's been in the family for for, for a very long time, mm. um, and incredibly successful um, with a lot of regular customers, very busy. Um, and um, I, yeah, I just embraced it. I, I really, really embraced it, and 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 I learned a lot. I learned a lot. From so what did you like about it? Was it the customer service definitely. aspect? Was the people that definitely. drew you? Initially? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. um, making people, you know, making people happy uh, and being responsible for that. Uh, I, I, I still believe now more than ever that that's was one of the greatest gifts, I, I think, that you can give to anybody. And, I, and yeah, I suppose from a very young age, I, I sort of realized that, um, you know, I don't want to say I'm good at it, but I... I I thought well, I can, I can, I can certainly learn, um, and 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 give it my best shot. So, um, I then decided to, at the age of yeah, I was still about fourteen or fifteen. Um, it was me, me, my mum, uh, so myself, my mum, and my sister, the three of us, um, and uh, in this lovely house in Torquay, uh, in a quite a quiet area, a little cul de sac at the top of top of Torquay, and I asked my mum if I could have the garage. Um, to which she said, you can, what do you want it for? And I said, well, I'm going to open a restaurant, mum. Um, and she said, uh, and she like said, do. yeah, and she said, well, that was kind of her response. Of course you will, love. Okay. And I was like, no, mum, I really will. Yeah. Um, so I took uh, my, you know, millions of pounds a week for being a kitchen porter. I think it was about 26 pounds a week back then. Um, and um, I would finish and I would sit down, I would go to my grandparents, very close to my grandparents, and I'd sit down with my, uh, my granddad and we'd go through the newspaper and we'd look at all the secondhand tables and chairs and then he would drive me, we'd go and collect them and, 
Um, I mean, people must have thought I was mad as a teenager. All my friends were buying Pokemon cards. You know, I was, I was, you know, going hard with tables and chairs and cushions. Um, <laughs> so, um, so uh, I opened, I launched this this dance cafe. It was called um, in the garage, and within six, and I was obsessed. I mean, like proper obsessed. <laughs> Um, was there dancing as well? There was no dancing. No, there was definitely no dancing. There wasn't space for dancing. It was like, it was like eight covers, two tables. Um, but within six months, I had like a bar. I had, um, you know, I, I was just, I was absolutely obsessed with it. And uh, I couldn't think about anything else. And even when I was in school, I mean, that's my excuse for, for not doing great in school, you know, because I was too worried about the, about the <laughs> restaurant. Um, but even, you know, I remember, you know, it was so, it's, a, it's quite a joke in the family, but um, I remember my mum saying, um, you know, what, what do you want for Christmas? And I said, um, CCTV system. <laughs> and she was like, well, your friends are getting an Xbox. Do you not want it? No, 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 Xbox. No, Xbox are for kids. I need a CCTV system in my restaurant. So I got a CCTV system in my restaurant. Um, anyway, uh, I remember uh, walking home from uh, school one day and on the, the local newspaper, uh, the local newspaper, the Herald Express, um, they were doing what was called the Herald Express Heart Appeal. And um, it's for Torbay Hospital. They raised a serious amount of money and they put a new um, heart um, department in. Mm. And uh, they were looking, obviously, for, for businesses to get involved. So I rang them up uh, without my mum knowing <laughs> and said, um, hello, it's Mr. Crump here. Um, I own a dance calf in uh, Kotalki. <laughs> and I would like to open on Sunday and donate all my profit, all my profits. <laughs> 110 pounds, I think it was. Uh, all my profits uh, for the day to your charity. Of course, they were like, oh, that's amazing. So they put me in the second page on a Saturday morning, quite a big spread. Um, and, uh, and I think it went out to, oh, I think about a quarter million people, this newspaper, yeah. um, or something crazy like that. And um, I remember my mum, she was, I think 50% was like, what the, what the hell have you done? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, how are we going to cope with this? This is nuts. Uh, and I think there was another 50% of her, which was actually really proud that yeah. I took the initiative to do it. And we did it. And it was amazing. And, you know, you know, even the, the directors of the hotel that I was working at came. Um, everybody came. It was amazing. And then um, a couple of killjoys in the neighborhood, um, which you do get, of course, they contacted the council. Um, <laughs> so within like a month, we were shut down. And um, obviously I was gutted. And all the parents were kicking off because uh, like in the area, mm. it, was, it, it went on for months, you know, big, new, big news in Torquay. Um, <laughs> Uh, it was it was it was really yeah. going off because the parents were writing in to the newspaper saying this is this is outrageous because actually you've got a a, a, a young a youngster that's um, trying to do something and it's actually taking all the kids off the street you know and it would, would be like that like midweek yeah. they'd come in and sit down it's nice and civilized and everybody it was lovely um, but anyway my mum was devastated that, that we had to close down the the rest the little restaurant the little cafe and uh, I made a promise to her and I said look. It's, it's cool. I'm going to go across the country. I'm going to find the best people that I possibly can to work for. I'm going to learn as much as I can. Uh, and one day I will, you know, we'll have, I'll have my own restaurant. Um, and that's exactly what I've done, really. So yeah. um, I then moved, moved all around the country, really, all different levels of restaurants, um, you know, from, from your, your local pub restaurant right up to Three Mission Stars, um, uh, which I think is the right way to do, you know, to, to gain as much experience as possible. Um, I ended up in Oxford, North Wales, the New Forest. Um, and then when it really sort of sort of went up a notch, I suppose, was when I decided to move to London. I was 20 years of age. Mm. Um, I was a restaurant supervisor at, of a hotel in, in the New Forest. 19, I thought I knew the world, thought I knew everything. Um, within reason. Um, but I thought, yeah, you know, this is, this is, I've done this since I was 14 years of age, you know, and I'm 19, I'm the, the, the mature age of 19. And then I, um, went to do the, um, as a, as a chef de rang, um, uh, the opening of Petrus, where it is now in Kinnison Street. Yeah. And my God, did I have a lot to learn. <laughs> my God, did my eyes open yeah. very, very, very quickly, really. Um, the team then were, were, were amazing actually, and very, very supportive. Um, but I had a lot of work to do. But I was up for the challenge because I wanted to learn. I wanted to be the best that I possibly could be. So um, I then moved on to a restaurant called Roussillon, which was a great experience as well. And then I decided, um, you know, I was 21, 22 at this point. I want to go and do something slightly different. You know, I'm, I'm young, I'm single. Um, but of course, I'm obsessed with the industry and hospitality. So I decided to go and work on board the Yachts of Seabourn, which at the time, the Seaborn Sojourn was like the only six star ship in the world. Um, it's, it's full on, you know, to join, the, to join that team, you've, you've got to go through an academy for a month. It's a lot of training. It's, 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 it's incredible. Um, and I did that. 
And on the first day that I joined um, the Seaborne Sojourn down in Southampton to go around the, the Baltics and then on to the Caribbean and South America, um, I met um, Marguerite, who of course is now my wife. So my sister-in-law loves to call the boat the love boat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so um, we did a we did a year together on the on the ship, and yeah. then we said, okay, cool, this has been good. We've learned a lot. It's been an amazing experience. But let's get back to it. So very uh, different again, different experience being on the boat. And definitely a bit of travel as well, I assume. Yeah, I mean, I think people think, especially when you're on the the cruises, I think that they think that you see a lot more than you actually do. You know, well, it was, yeah. it was you, you know, it's I, I was used to it. You know, and I, and I, and and this is the thing as well. You know, and I, I say this a lot to to a lot of people. I wanted to do it. You know, it's yeah. not prison. You know, it was, oh, it must be really hard. You don't have a day off. For, uh, I think it was, it was two, uh, four months, four months on, oh, two gosh. months off, four months. You don't have a day yeah. off. Oh, that's fine. I'm 21, 22. You know, I'm up for it. I, I love it. I, lo- I loved it. It's part of the part of the journey, um, and it's good to see what you're you're made of when you're young. You know, because it it's, it stands you in good, as you know. Um, so I'm pleased I did that. But then we said, right, okay, now we uh, let's get to London. Um, and uh, restaurant Gordon Ramsay for me, um, you know, growing up was a was a was a was like the shrine for me. Uh, Gordon Ramsay as well. Um, I mean, I remember first going to London, just walking past a restaurant called a Ramsey. I used to have butterflies, you know. So <laughs> I thought, no, that's where I, this is where I want to be. So um, that's where I went. Um, knocked on the door, spoke to Rob, um, who I sort of knew before at that time. Um, and he said, okay, what are you doing tomorrow night? I mean, he was really sharp. I, I, I actually remember him saying, um, I said, oh, I, I, um, he said, where, where, where have you been? Because obviously I was at Petrus. So where have you been? I said, I've been on the yachts of Seabourn. He said, cruise ship. I said, well, it's a luxury yacht, actually. And, he said, <laughs> and he said, I remember him saying, cruise ship. <laughs> okay, um, I'll see you tomorrow, six o'clock. And I was like, yes, okay, Rob, no problem. Um, so, so who's Rob? Just Rob, Rob, uh, Rob Rose. Rob Rose, Rob Rose yeah. Okay. So um, uh, I went the next day. I did an evening with them. I absolutely loved it. I mean, I absolutely yeah. loved it. Um, and then I started on the Monday. And then obviously I was there for a few years. Uh, an amazing experience. Um, was promoted to head waiter. Um, and then... One of the chefs who I was working with at Restaurant Gordon Ramsay went to um, open his own place called the Oxford Blue in, in Old Windsor. Him and his wife, so Stephen Ellis and his wife, um, and myself and Marguerite both decided to, to follow them over. Um, great experience, did that for a few years. Mm-hmm. And then ultimately we said, okay, now's the time for us to, to go and open our own place, which we did. Um, and we bought the place back in 2019, spent the whole year refurbing, opened December the 4th. Uh, had the most unbelievable start, actually, um, and of course closed by March because of lockdown. Um, uh, but yeah. look, I think I think all these things are sent to try us, right? So mm. um, yeah, that's that's my career so far. Okay, nice. lovely. Well, that leads on nicely, actually, to the importance of service and and your thoughts on what what makes front of house service so important, and how how do you choose the people that you hire, and and how do you motivate those those people? You know. I think first, you... first and foremost, I think front of house is the, I mean, and I passionately believe this, um, and I know we all say it all the mm. time as front of house professionals, but without uh, you know, a, a good restaurant, any restaurant really, but a good restaurant, a great mm. restaurant, an excellent restaurant, without a great front of house team, um, it's, not, it's not a great restaurant, is it? You know? No, I agree. Yeah. No. It's um, totally... yeah. yeah, and I know we say it a lot, but I think it's really important. They're not just words. It's actually really true. There are not many great restaurants without great front of house. Absolutely correct, yeah. Um, I think when it comes to recruiting people um, and building the team, you know, we're, we're very lucky. We've a lot of the staff that, that we have in the team have been with us from the beginning. In fact, a lot of them as well, we've actually worked with over the years. And as soon as they heard that myself and Marguerite have got our own place, they've all followed us. Um, but I think for me, it just comes down to um, their own personal drive. You know, I've taken on some staff that have the most amazing um uh, qualifications, the most amazing experience, worked in some incredible restaurants, mm. but their understanding of our mission isn't quite there. Whereas I've taken on other members of staff who don't really have that much experience, but they're so keen to learn. They're so driven mm. um, and they really understand the mission and they want to understand the mission as much as they possibly can. And years later, they're still with us and they're some of the best you know, waiters I've ever seen. Um, so I think when it comes down to recruiting people, it's, it's about understanding the mission. That's, that's, that's mm. vital. Mm. Um, it's funny and, how it is that way sometimes, isn't it? That you're just sometimes you'll hire someone in, you're going, well, they've not worked in any restaurants before, and they'll turn out to be the most amazing front of house person. Yeah, because they believe in the culture, yeah, and what, uh, what you stand for. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I absolutely swear by that. Yeah. I think that's that's the most important thing for me. Um, 
there. I mean, obviously, depending on the level that they're, they're, they're coming to the, you know, the, the, the job that they're applying for. Yeah, of course. Uh, but generally, that's that's yes. that's what I, that's what we would uh, that's what we'd look for. That's what I look mm. for. Um, and the importance of front of house. Yeah, I mean, it's everything, isn't it? I mean, it's it's you're, you're literally the face of of a business. Um, you're the face of um, the the of, of what what the business represents, what the restaurant is. Who's in the kitchen? You're the face of absolutely everybody, as you just said, David. You know mm. the culture. You, you've mm. got to represent the culture at all times. Um, and for us in our positions, not just for the guests, but for our team as well. Yeah. So, um, and that's important. How we hold ourselves, how we are all the time for the for the team to see, um, as well as our guests. But front of house, I think it's um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the best industry in the world, isn't it? I mean, I'm sure we all agree <laughs> on that. You know, I, I passionately believe that. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. What are your thoughts on um, uh, regulars and creating these relations? We, well, a little bit like Medler, um, mm. you know, we, we have a lot of regular guests now. Um, and they ultimately, particularly for the, the, the location that we're in, um, you know, being in Beaconsfield, it's, we've got an amazing community. Regular guests are our bread and butter. You know, I think now we're at 50, we say we're fully booked. We have 16 tables. We probably know at least 50% of the tables now. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, you know, and I know how big our regular guests are um, becoming because now when you come to dine at the, the Greyhound, our regular guests, we actually engrave their names on the napkin rings. Um, and I've had to install, literally install a huge unit in our office just to, you know, it started off with just like 20 or 30. I think we're now like 500 or something. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit of magic right there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's just stop and just like, you actually do personalized yeah, napkin absolutely. rings yeah, for your regulars. Yeah, absolutely. That is nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, and, and there's not, yeah. and I'm not just saying this, but it's nice right. for us as well. I mean, I love it. The first time, you know, yeah. oh, David and Amy, you know, you're coming for lunch, you know, we're getting to know you, you're, you, you're, reg you're becoming yeah. regulars. And then that, that magic moment when you come in for, for dinner, maybe your usual table and you sit down and as soon as you sit down, you. <laughs> do you have that yeah it's honestly it's beautiful yeah, it's, it's, so be it's so special it's so special and the team really enjoy it as well mm. they get excited oh it's the first time PRs we call them personalized napkin rings oh it's the first time they're going to see their PRs. you know it's, it's really exciting so um and that's just a small thing isn't it that's that's what i love about what we do yeah. um it's magic yeah it's magic so it's yeah that's uh yeah. What was the question? Sorry. Any other? <laughs> we were talking about <laughs> regular customers. Oh, yeah, regulars. Yes. And yeah. so clearly, you have some magic touches that you do for those. Yeah. Those reg regular. We're also really customers. fortunate, though. I think you know, to the regular, the regular guests that we have, mm. um, they're amazing, mm. truly amazing, mm. and they've they're really they're really they become as you know they become a part of your extended family, right? Mm. And I mean, what a job! What a job we have when we're doing already what we love, and then you have guests that you know and become part of your family and then yeah. you oh how was your daughter's christening and yeah. oh we've just moved from from london to the area and you get to know them and you know it's oh it's just so special so for you would you say that it's more just very natural because of the area that you're in that that you just remember these people you know they're your friendly faces you know you genuinely care about them and that's that's your regular customer. i think would that's what it, that's, that's it, what it comes down to yeah. just just genuine you know and I, how do you instill this culture in the across the whole team yeah um by doing it, I think, mm. I think it's a bug, isn't it? I think when you when you have that when you you know successfully look after somebody, um, and it's magic. Let's not forget that. Mm. And everybody should experience some of the magic, whatever that whatever that may be. It's it's magic. What we do in the dining room is it should be magic. And once you start to experience um, experience giving a bit of that magic to somebody else, it's it's just a oh, it's an incredible feeling. So. I think again, going yeah. back to you know, we talk about you know being genuine. Naturally, the team see it, and then you you instill it by asking them to do it. You know, asking them to look what you know. For example, you know uh, the the the, the uh, we're going to order some new purse size napkin rings. Is there anybody any regular guests you can think of that um, that needs some? And then our senior team will say, "Oh yeah, what well, well, this person, that person, this person." Then when those guests next come in. They will be the ones to put it down, and they're excited because yeah. they put them on the list. So it's yeah. just, it's just, in, it's, you know, just doing it, um, and, and getting getting everyone to get that bug. Yeah, that's it. And and community is also really important. I mean, we try to do as much as we can in the community, um, whether that's you know supporting the church across the road, local charities, you know, the the, the count, country fair once a year mm. we host that. Um, the, the bar it also gives a great opportunity for the team. It's just once a year. It's all for charity. Mm. We close on a Sunday, Monday, of course. 
So open up on a, on a Monday. We tell the team, look, you're welcome to come in and volunteer, which most of them do, uh, I have to say. Because um, that's like, they're, they're, for me, it's like, look, you've got an opportunity here to, to, for do, doing something. We work long hours. I get it. Yeah. Not asking you to, you know, um, go and do a, a charity run five days a week. Mm. But once a year, let's get together and let's raise some money for local charities. And they do. Mm. Um, so we try and do as much as we can for the local community. Um, whether that's sponsors, whether that's getting involved with local schools. Going back to what you are saying earlier, um, um, you know, about sort of um, the team. And going back to what I said earlier about, you know, when I did that sort of like trial course the last two years of my schooling, I now find it so important I actually go to visit schools. Mm-hmm. And I've done six schools so far, and we have taken on six apprentices, full-time apprentices. Wow. Yeah. Really they're, they're, the kids are out there. Yeah. We just need to go and yeah. show them and tell them what it's about. They, mm. they, they really are out there. And, you know, you always start with, does anybody have any, you know, the, the, the teacher in the assembly will say, does anybody have any questions? And everyone's all a little bit kind of, mm, no, not really. And then by the end of the talk, just 45 minutes. Just, and all you've got to do is just talk about what we do, mm-hmm. what the opportunities are. Mm. As we know, the opportunities are endless in our industry. They truly are. Mm-hmm. Um, and dare I say, especially with what we're doing and the direction we want to go in, they really are, the opportunities really are endless. Mm. Um, and towards the end, does anyone have any questions? They all put their hands up. And the questions mm. they ask are, are really... Um, uh, really quite inspiring. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. How, how, uh, how big is your team at the moment? So we have just over 40. So mm-hmm. just, yeah, 24, 25 full-time staff. Uh, and then the rest are, are made up of, um, yeah, casuals. Would you, what would you say va- you value most about the team as a whole? How, how they work together? What's, what's, do, you, do you build them and do you, do you see them as having different personality traits and using that to your advantage? I, exactly. I was literally going to say that. Okay. So, so um, <laughs> yeah, see you in the show here, Amy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's literally what I was going to say yeah. is that I think because we're as close as we are. Yeah. Because we really are close. I mean, if you, you know, I'm very proud of our staff retention. I really am. Um, and if you look at the team as a whole, um, you know, even the, even the casuals that, you know, we have either as kitchen porters or as, as, as runners, mm. even they'll go away, they'll go to university and then they'll come back and then they'll come back to work with us time and time and time again. You know, we've got some casuals that have started, you know, when they're doing their GCSEs and then they've done their A-levels and they've gone off to uni, but they still stick with us. Um, and let's not, you know, forget, it's, it's not, it's, it's amazing, absolutely love it, but it is high pressure. You know, yes. it's not, if you're 16, 17 and you're not looking at, high, I have so much respect for it. You're not, you might not be looking at hospitality for a career. Oh. Well, you could be earning maybe the same amount of money. I mean, we, we do pay well, to be fair, because I believe in that, of course. But you could be earning a similar amount of money, maybe just, I don't know, working somewhere else. You know, somewhere, maybe yeah. a little less pressure. Yeah. But the fact they come back and they want to be involved and they still, you know, they still want to stay in the, group, the team group chat because they don't want to miss anything. <laughs> I have, yeah, I have, I have so much respect for that. I, I truly do. Um, so, um, yeah, in regards, to, in regards to, to, to building the team, um, I think what's really important to remember is is everything's professional. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I will uh, one thing I will not allow, mm-hmm. um, and I'm really passionate about this, is anything um, personal. That's you know without going into too much detail, probably because I've uh, maybe experienced it in the past. Mm. In, in you know growing up in the industry, I've seen it. Mm. Um, I don't like it. That's not to say that people aren't going to be upset. You know. David, if you're training Amy, for example, and um, you know Amy gets something wrong time and time again, that doesn't, oh, that doesn't happen. Oh, with, yeah. Which would never happen. What a, <laughs> what, what a stupid analogy! Does everything perfect? Oh my god! I should say it the other way around, really. Amy, <laughs> thank you. You've trained David time yeah. and time again on something, <laughs> and he has completely copped it up. Yeah, I would expect you to be getting upset. Yeah, I would expect absolutely. you to. Right? Yeah. If you were not getting upset. I would have more of a problem with that than the fact you're getting upset. Um, but what's really important is David would have to, David has to understand why you're getting upset. Now, it's not zero to a hundred like that. Of course mm. it's not. You know, um, David, as I said to you before, you know, I've, I've got a lot of respect for your, sort of your principles and how you, I have a similar thing, I suppose, in the sense that it's when, you know, when it comes to training, if you, if you come to join the Greyhound, um, you know, say you come as a senior waiter, let's mm. say. Um, I'll always, you'll always do a few days as a junior waiter, always. You get given a checklist. And I find it really important that on this training checklist, there's quite a lot on there. Mm. But what's really important is that it's not somebody next to you signing it for you. You know, oh yeah, Amy knows this. And you're thinking, well, I don't really know it, but I've only been here two days, so I don't want to <laughs> yeah. upset anybody. Yeah, no, no, no. You will tick it when you're happy. You will sign it when you're happy. 
Um, and then everyone gets involved. So everybody around you will be, oh, Amy, let me have a look. Oh, we, there's, has no one shown you that? Oh, well, they have, but I don't really understand it. Let's go through it again. You also get to know the rest of the team. Then you'll come, um, you'll do exactly the same as a, as a senior waiter. Um, as a senior waiter, again, training. Three months training. You know, we invest in, it's about three months. I happily invest about three months worth of, worth of training for, for a senior waiter with us. Um, and that's not to say they're going to know everything after three months. Of course, there's a lot to know. But the way that um, I'll build the team is that you'll come in as a senior waiter um, and you'll be behind somebody for about a month. Then for the following month, you'll basically be next to them. And then the following month after that, you'll be ahead of them, but they will still be behind you. You still have support. After three months, we sit down, we have a chat and go, okay, look, where you're at, how you're doing. Some people do it before the three months. Some people take a little mm. bit longer. And you know what? Honestly, I do not mind. If you give 100%, you can make mistakes all day long. It's, it's, it's absolutely fine. If you give 95%, that's a mm. problem for me. Um, so I think that's the, yeah. That's- Sounds like a really consistent way that you've got that you've built there um, for training, which is, yeah. you know, not totally standard in all restaurants, is it? It's sometimes mm. you can be kind of thrown in the deep end. Definitely. So that sounds... Yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, it's, you know, obviously we're working with people, right? So... Start them um, strong. It's, yeah. yeah, we're working with people. So, you know, you know, people leave, people, you know, also, you know, we're people, we're humans. So, but that's generally what we try to, what we try to stick to. Um, but you're um, setting them up for success. So they're more likely to stay, aren't they? Because they don't feel I like... I guess so. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. And going back to what I was saying earlier, you know, if then, for example, somebody then makes mistakes, it's like, look, you've, you know, we've, we've invested a lot. You should know this. Or yes. if you make that mistake, like I say, as long as you give in hundred percent, it's absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. We'll go over it and we'll go over it and we'll go over it. And mistakes will happen. Mistakes are really important. Um, we do we do two briefings a day with the Greyhound, three on a Saturday. Um, the the third one on a Saturday is really important for me. Um, it's what we call the debrief at the end of the week, and mm-hmm. that's when we have the whole team together, including the kitchen. That can be at midnight, could be at one o'clock in the morning, could be three o'clock in the morning. For me, I don't care. We need to get the whole team together, and we talk about the week just gone. We talk about the week going forward. We talk about where we're at. Um, we have targets. So when we first opened, we started at one percent. And our goal is to get us where we know we can be at 100%. Uh, we're currently at 28% at the moment. It's taken us, we've had two full years of trading now. It's taken us two full years, basically, to get to 28%. And then on every Saturday, we talk about what the next targets are. So everyone then goes away, getting ready for next week. But one thing I find really important with the team in the debrief is after I've finished talking, um, I will then ask everybody individually how their day was and how their week was and give them a few minutes. Sometimes they don't want to say anything. It's fine. Sometimes they need to get something off their chest. Uh, yeah, Amy, how was your day? How was your week? Yeah, it's, it's been an okay week. Guys, I'm really sorry about Thursday. You know, I, I didn't feel like I did my best, but I, you know, um, uh, Lauren, I just want to say thank you so much for, for your support. You know, you're really behind me and, if, mm. and it builds connections for everybody and everybody mm-hmm. understands everybody a bit more. And the same with the briefings. Whenever we have a briefing twice a day, I will always start with any mistakes that I've made. Always. And the reason for that is I want every single person to uh, to you know, we've all been there where you've made a mistake and you're more worried. You're so worried about getting into serious trouble that you're more worried about covering up the mistake than you are actually the guest. Yeah. I don't care about any, mm. anybody or anything right now apart from the guest when we're in service. That's all I care about. Take the rollicking later, whatever. It doesn't matter. Honestly, it's no big deal. Let's just fix the problem. So I'll always start. And there are times when, especially the new starters, they're like, I'm just standing there reeling off a list of things I could have done better. But what I'm trying to do is I want them to firstly understand that we can talk about mistakes and we will make them. But secondly, and I want them, and secondly, I want them to learn from them. Mm. Because if I can then teach them that this is, this is why I got this wrong, this is what I did. And that's another way of teaching your team from your own mistakes. But then it also, you know, there are, like I say, sorry, some of the, the new starters, you know, they'll, they're like, oh my God, he's just standing there telling all this. But yeah, but if you made those mistakes, I want you to be able to openly say to everybody, look, this is what I've done this week without feeling ashamed or without feeling stupid or without feeling mistakes are going to happen. Um, and I think that speeds up a lot of, you know, it, we can move faster a, a lot quicker. Mm. And you learn as well from from you, the owner of the restaurant, how you would deal in that situation. Definitely. If that happened to me, I'd be like, well, he he's talked about that actually, that he made the same mistake. And Absolutely. what did he do to fix it? And Absolutely. So, and I want to encourage, but I want to encourage yeah. that with everybody. I want junior staff to be able to talk to senior staff in the same way. I want them to be mm. able to say, look, you know, uh, I've made this mistake. Mm. Or the seniors to the juniors, uh, rather. You know, I've made this mistake. This is what I've done. This is how I fixed it. I'd probably try it this way because like, I really, really want to try to embrace that in our, in our culture. Mm. Yeah. yeah. 
What about handling those mistakes? Do you um, during service or just in general? In general, yeah. Um, again, I think it depends. Like I say, you know, my rule of thumb really is if you've given a hundred percent, if you've given a hundred percent, it's cool. We'll, yeah. we'll find a solution. Because in general, I mean, in, in my experience at Medla, there's <clears throat> when mistakes are made, it's usually an opportunity to um, create a magic moment for the mm-hmm. customer and leave a yeah. great lasting impression. Yeah, and some of our best regulars are actually from massive errors we made. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. True. no, it is true. Yeah, yeah, actually, mm. yeah. yeah. Sometimes how we've handled it's it an has opportunity. Won their trust, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, it's more of an opportunity, isn't it, to yeah. to turn it around and to to create a magic touch. Yeah, it? I mean, in, sure. in in service, definitely, and we do mm. say that. You know, there are yeah. times where. You know, the, the, yeah, exactly like you just said, some of our regulars too, you know, yeah. there have been moments when I've received an email saying that this wasn't quite what I was expecting or this wasn't quite, mm. okay, no problem, <laughs> come back. Mm. Come back and I'll show you exactly what we do and I'll show <laughs> you exactly how serious we are and I'll show you exactly, yeah. um, you know, the, how serious I'm taking your feedback. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they become friends. Um, mm. And that's important because then you yeah. trust them. Mm. I, also, I also have a lot of trust with, with somebody that can be very honest and open. Mm. Um, as a restaurateur yourself, you will know it's it's a lot um, more useful to receive a, an email uh, or a call or a guest to say, look, this is what I would, you know, thankfully we don't have them too often, but it, it does happen. Of yeah. course it does. Look, we were expecting this or we've had this. And I think last time we came, it was like this, but this time it's like this. To have, a, And sometimes, I'm not saying the guests are wrong, but sometimes the guests can misunderstand something. So, yeah. well, no, the only reason that happened last time was because this was, oh, okay. Mm. Rather than it's being on... Expect- managing it. Yeah, rather than being on a trip advisor. It? Yeah. It's <laughs> like, oh, cheers. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, okay, great. It's actually, actually, what you're saying isn't right. It's actually incorrect. But, yeah. you know, um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, don't put, put that feedback out there before you've given yeah, the restaurant before, an opportunity yeah, to correct. That. Absolutely that. Said. Absolutely that. And yeah. I think, yeah. But mistakes, mistakes during service, um, like I say, it's all about, mm. for, for, for me and for us, it's all about the guest focus. Let's just deal with the mistake. We'll learn, we'll learn, we'll look and learn of, of, of how not to make that mistake again. Mm-hmm. Generally, I like to do that as a whole team so others can listen and learn as well. But during the service, absolute guest focus. And if it mm. does mean we need to do something else, then we do something else. Um, if there's a delay in the kitchen, Fine, we'll do, you know, the delay in the, in the, from, the, from the hot side of the kitchen. Okay, no, you know what, like a big delay for whatever reason, no problem. We'll do a middle course. You know, it's their first time here. It's a, it's, and this is the magic of service, isn't it? It's their first, it's, it's your first time at the Greyhound. There's going to be another 45 minute wait on your two beef. No problem, go to the larder section and say, look, any chance that we can have two, um, two salmons as soon as mm. possible for table 21, please. No mm. problem. Salmon arrives. Oh, look, it's your first time here. So what I would like to do is I'd like to have, for you to try some of the salmon. It's actually my favorite at the moment, blah, blah, blah. After you've enjoyed the salmon, I'd love to give you a little tour of the place, show the garden. You know, within five years, we want to be growing 50% of our own fruits and vegetables and herbs. Maybe I can yeah. show you. Oh, amazing. So you're sat there. The kitchen can now start to build back up where they were, which because there was, a mistake has happened. The beef was overcooked. Something's gone wrong. You're enjoying some salmon. Okay, it's cost mm-hmm. us money. However, it's a good investment. You're enjoying your salmon. You then get to spend time with me. <laughs> well, <I'm, laughs> some might say it's a punishment but um, I, then, I then get to take you into the garden show exactly what we're doing yeah. you then come back upstairs five minutes later whoop, the beef arrives there you go in your heads wow this is amazing it's yeah. all behind the scenes so that's it's how been a that's, swan service, absolutely that's yeah. how you deal with mistakes yeah. you, know, just, you just go above and beyond and sometimes sometimes um, as much as you can go down that that, that road of and obviously we do it a lot, but that, down that road of keeping everything smooth and um, learning, adjusting, mm. coordinating. Sometimes you just have to say, I'm sorry, mm. we've made a mistake. That's the <laughs> only thing you can do, right? There's some, yeah. Sometimes you're in certain situations when you can just say, look, yeah, I'm sorry. Mm. How many tables do you have in the restaurant? 16 tables. Yeah, mm. yeah 16 tables. But we don't, we don't relay a single table. Um, yeah. I, I, we made a promise to ourselves when we, yeah. we bought the Greyhound that... We want the guests to, I mean, obviously we have a tasting menu. Uh, of course, we have a lunch menu, a la carte menu, and our tasting menu. Um, but for us, it's really important that when the guests arrive, it doesn't matter who they are, it doesn't matter what they're spending, it doesn't matter what menu they're having. Honestly, it's their table. There's no mm. rush for lunch. We do one sitting for lunch, one sitting for dinner. Um, and that's become, a, again, a lot of our regulars really like that. Mm. And as you well know, uh, lots of, you know, all guests, but a lot of our regulars, they all like different different times as well. Some guests, you know, 
if you clear the starters and their mains are not on the tail within a minute and a half, you know, they think World War III is going off. Um, <laughs> whereas if you bring it within 25 minutes, they're like, oh yeah, in a rush. And you're like, well, uh, no, <laughs> just thought you might be hungry. Um, so, you know, you have to, you have to learn, your, learn your guests as well, of course. Yeah. Um, and that's also part of the, part of the fun. Nice. <laughs> I just like to go back to uh, training the teams. Um, it sounds like a little bit like in Medlow where you have uh, like students or whatever who are not necessarily um, career waiters or career front of house. Mm. Um, but like in Medlow, when they leave to do whatever job they're doing, I like to think there's a bit of Medlow service in whatever they're going to do in the future. So yeah. what sort of skills do you think your students would take into their future jobs? Yeah, I think... When we first opened uh, the Greyhound, I said, um, I said, no, not taking on a, no, only career, yeah. only hospitality careers, <laughs> uh, full-time staff. You know, I'm not, I'm not doing this kind of, I can do four hours on a Saturday afternoon. I'm not doing this. No, no, no. This, no. this is it. We're professionals. Right? And that's how we ran when we first opened. Yes. Just full-time team, everybody. And of course, our full, the full-time team that we do have, they are all very much hospitality career focused and they're all doing extremely well. Um, and then we'd been open for a, for a little period and um, one of the, the young girl who lived around the corner actually came in and said, look, I'd like to work um, mm -hmm. part-time as a, as a junior waiter. So essentially their job is running food um, from the kitchen into the dining room. It's all tray service. Each time a guest has been to the restroom, whew, straight behind them, uh, toilet paper, the hand towels, uh, um, and polishing, lots of polishing mm -hmm. and linen and lots of cleaning. Um, <laughs> and... Um, I, I said to her, I said, like, why, why would you want to come here when you could go and work at, you know, a pub and just yeah. clear glasses, you know, have an easier life, you know, um, essentially. And she said, well, no, you know, my parents have eaten here. They say, you know, how extraordinary it is um, the, the, the level that you're working to. Um, also, we're independent. I think a lot of people like that mm -hmm. for many reasons. And I was like, oh, okay, you know what? Come in. Let's, let's see how you get on. Come in and do a couple of hours tomorrow evening. So she did. And she was amazing. <laughs> Honestly, like amazing. She was so polite. She was so hardworking. She was so passionate. And um, since, since this girl, yeah, we've, we've, probably, we've probably got 12, 14 um, what I call casuals now. And they're all amazing. And, and you never look back. <laughs> never look yeah. back, no. Um, I great. think... I think the, the skills that they'll learn, the ones that stay with us, because for some it's just too much, you know, and, yeah. and, and, yeah. and yeah. I get it. Okay. You know, you're 16, 17, and you're working in an environment where you've got 25, you know, adults that are just absolutely so focused <laughs> yeah. on what they're doing, you know, from the minute they're there to the minute yeah. they leave. Uh, fair enough. But others thrive on it. Yeah. Um, and they won't know it now, but they'll see it definitely in the future. Mm -hmm. Learning how to um, deal with pressure, Prioritizing, mm. definitely prioritizing. How you present yourself, always <laughs> smiling, uh, of course. Um, and um, I guess, I guess, uh, a good, a good understanding of what hard work looks like. A good understanding of what career-driven people, you know, look like. How they mm. work, how they are, because they are ultimately surrounded by them when they when they come mm. to work at the Greyhound. Mm. So. I think there's lo lots and lots of skills that, you know, I certainly encourage it. That's for sure. Mm. Um, and, you know, there are, there are also a few that we've taken on like that um, who have then gone home genuinely and said to their parents, look, I know what I want to do with myself. I, want, yeah. I know what I want to do. I want to go into hospitality. I want to be part of the Greyhound's journey. Do you mind to go in and sit down with Daniel and Marguerite and speak to them about doing a possible apprenticeship? Mm. And we've taken a couple on like that. The parents at first, and this is obviously... Why wow, it's amazing what, what you guys are doing, what you're doing. We need to get it out there. You know, it is an amazing career. It's, yeah. a, it's a phenomenal career. Um, ignore the bad press, you know, all the poor wages, all the drugs, all the, I've never seen, I genuinely have never seen anything like that in my whole yeah. career, honestly. Um, yeah, poor wages maybe at some point, but it's changing, right? Yeah. Um, and um, at first, the parents are, oh, really? Yeah, you're, you want to be a waiter? Oh, really? And you sit down with them. You explain sort of who we are and what we're doing and what their opportunities are going forward. Yeah. And then they're, they're totally, totally behind it. Um, and as I often joke with them as well, like, look, I've got a text from your mum here, you know, it says I can give you a seriously hard time. So, <laughs> you know, you might want to step it up, you know. Um, <laughs> Uncle Dan's talking. Um, so, and, and they're great. They're great. So I think it's, it's great for anybody to do. Yeah, it's great for anyone to do. Yeah, I don't know many industries where it's totally accessible to all 
people, all ages, and where you can work with um, some of the most passionate and driven people and highly skilled yeah. as well. Like uh, some of the people that I've worked with are just unbelievably good at what they do. Yeah. And that is, in itself is very exciting to Definitely. be hanging out with people like that. Yeah. Um, and that's what's amazing, isn't it, about working Absolutely. in hospitality. So, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Just like to move on to your thoughts on the role of the sommelier. Um, so I think sommeliers are amazing. I think, you know, for, for someone that obviously enjoys eating out as much as I possibly can, um, <laughs> having a, a good sommelier look after you is, is, is vital. Mm. Um, I think it's a difficult job. I think you, um, I think you, to be a sommelier, there's obviously, as we all know, there's a big difference between having incredible wine knowledge and then being a sommelier. Mm. You know, you have to also, um, be an incredible waiter. You have to be incredible with guests. You have to read them. You have to be delicate. That's uh, you know you have to you have to have a real delicate approach. Mm. You know some guests might not appreciate you saying uh, you know so how much are you willing to spend on a bottle of wine <laughs> uh, when you've got uh, you know when you're trying to impress six other people at the table and it's like um, I don't know four pound fifty <laughs> um, you know so you've got to be a little you've got to be a little bit delicate um, and I think the great sommeliers are genuinely yeah. um, they inspire me I think they're amazing. Mm. Um, at the Greyhound, we have obviously Marguerite, who um, is yeah, her wine knowledge is is amazing. Um, she's she's far too humble, but she she truly is absolutely amazing. Um, and what I love about what we set ourselves to do at the Greyhound was that when we first opened, it was like, okay, are we going to have a reception team? Are we going to have a sommelier team? Are we going to no? We're gonna we're gonna have the team as we have our junior waiters. We then have our senior waiters. Of course, we now have our head waiter, assistant manager, restaurant manager, and so on. But every single one of the senior waiters, we will give full training to on the wine. And when it comes to comfort, because you already have, I mean, if you, you know, talk about personalities earlier, mm. every single one of our team has such different personalities. Um, I can't, I can't, I mean, I'm laughing because they're just, they're all crazy, but um, amazing, like yeah. truly, truly, truly amazing. And you know, you weigh it up. It depends how you want to look at it. Some people have strengths. Some people have weaknesses. Yeah, maybe um, in their works, in their skills. But everybody's um, personality for me is considered a strength and it adds so much to what we do and who we are. And there's, there's almost a different, there's almost a different member of staff for the guest liking. Um, seriously. And I see that. I don't really yeah. say this to the guys very much, mm -hmm. to be fair. I don't. Um, because I don't want them to just think about, I want them to do what they do and be confident. Mm. But quite often there are guests that will say to me, look, next time I'm in, can I have that person? Or mm. next time I'm in, can I have that person? That happens quite a lot. Um, which it's is a different a, style, isn't it? Yeah, the, it is a different off, style. Some people give, don't yeah. they, to, you know, some are more reserved and yeah. some are a lot more casual. Absolutely. Maybe. Yeah, um, absolutely. I'm smiling because I'm thinking of both all of them great, in my head. You know, <laughs> they're, they're both great ways of, to approach a table. But, definitely, definitely. Um, so we, so So we decided that, you know, all the staff, and it's definitely the longer approach, maybe harder approach even, but to have all the senior waiters trained on every area, whether that's the yeah. reception, whether that's the bar, whether that's the cocktails, whether that's the wine, whether that's the cheese, whether that's the, whatever it is that they're doing. Um, but then if I look at the quality of the, our senior waiters now, I mean, honestly, they're, they're, they're amazing, truly amazing. So, and, and why wouldn't they be? You know, mm. they, they we, we train our front of house team every day, anywhere between an hour to an hour and a half. Mm. Marguerite always starts at 11, 15 in the morning with wine training every day, every single day. Um, uh, then, you know, we, we, we could look at service elements in the, in the afternoon training as well. But service elements, beers, ciders, teas, coffees, cheeses, dishes. We have a, um, I'm quite passionate about everybody being involved with the, um, the dish training. So what we do at the Greyhound is, uh, Jermaine uh, will bring out his his new dishes, and um, he'll plate them. He's obviously done, he's obviously got a, a setup with the guys in the kitchen, so you know they'll they'll have their 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 routine of cooking before and checking and tasting mm. and talking and adapting and what have you. But ultimately, once the dish is ready, um, we'll have a tasting front of house. And say this say there's three dishes, for example. We don't you know we don't change twelve dishes overnight. You know, obviously it's seasonal and it's and it's gradual. Um, Every single member of the, the team, it'd be like, okay, David, you're on the starter. Amy, you're on the main. You, you're on the dessert. Their job then is to, to listen, like we all will, of course, take some photos. Um, we ask as many questions as we possibly can. You then go away. 
then you know, you've got a week and you need to research as much as you can with the help from Jermaine, of course, but the ingredients, the supplier, some history, flavors, what have you. Marguerite at the same time is tasting her wines. Um, sometimes it's, it's like that. She's like five minutes. Sometimes she's like three hours and she's still not happy. Um, I hate days like that. Um, <laughs> and, um, and it's got to be perfect. It has to be perfect. To apparently. Be perfect. Yes. Um, no, it does. Of course. It does. Um, and, um, then everyone goes away. They write them up. They send them yeah. out to everybody. Allergens, wine pairings. Once Marguerite's finished, um, what cutlery we use? Is there something we need to know how we pour it, where to pour, it? you know, all those kind of things. But going back to the sommelier training, um, or sorry, the role of the sommelier. Mm. Yeah, I think the way that we do it, the Greyhound, I think it has it has a lot of comfort. There's a lot of comfort. It's very rare that because you know, like I say, it's, I think I think the role of a sommelier is, is amazing. Um, but you you know you you mm. have to you have to be good. You have to be good. You know you can you can there there is there's definitely rooms for it can it can make or break a night. Mm. And I've seen it firsthand where someone's gone to a table and. They've offered a glass of champagne and they've gone through a list of champagnes. But I've genuinely seen this, you know, champagnes by the glass. Um, and the guests have just gone, um, yeah, that one sounds good. It's £125 per glass. <laughs> you know, they're spending oh, yeah. £150 on food between them. And then they've got £250 for two glasses of champagne. Um, amazing champagne, by the way. Um, <laughs> and of course, oh, it's on is. the list for a reason because the guests will, the guests will absolutely enjoy yeah. it. Some guests that want to try it. Yeah. But if you're not expecting it, so, you know, it can, it can definitely go terribly wrong, but when it goes right, my God, you know, when you can have a connection with a guest, um, you can find a, find a, a, a wine that pairs obviously very well with what they're mm. eating. Part of the, part of the, the, um, if there's a celebration mm. to get the right wine. Yeah. You know, guests ask, or oh, can I take the bottle home with me? Or can I have a photo of the wine? Or can I have the court, you know, from memory? That's special. So yeah, the role of the sommelier, I think it's really important. I think it's a tough job. Um, mm. I think it's a tough job and certainly a job that we should all be respecting. David always says it's his star striker. That's Absolutely. That's what he too. Yeah. Do you have a reception, uh, no, reception so, team? So, no. So, we, so we, we do it all ourselves. We okay. do it all ourselves. Between, I mean, I say, you know, all ourselves. We do have a big team, as we established yeah. earlier. We do have a big team. So, um, and obviously, um, you know, Andrew, our restaurant manager, he oversees the reception. Obviously, then he has Hannah. Um, our assistant manager and Lauren, our head waiter, to to assist with that as well. Okay. Marguerite also has quite a big overview of the the reception. Yeah. Um, but it's between us all, and the yeah. communication, you know, communication is really important. Absolutely, um, yeah. With, to, with those things, yeah. Um, but it's a really good system in place. Excellent. I can't sit here and take any take too much credit for it because I know that they'll <laughs> they'll listen. They're going to listen to this and then they'll be like. Down right, the right into me. Like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be some comments on that. No, but they're but they're great. They're great. Okay. So um, yeah, really good. Yeah. Um. So we're on to uh, the. If we were working for you, what would be your three non-negotiable things that you'd expect from David and I? Um, three non-negotiables. First non-negotiable. Only three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> First non-negotiable for me would be um, understanding the mission. You have to understand what our mission is. Um, I'm not saying you're going to understand it tomorrow. Mm. Maybe not even in a week. Maybe not even in a month. But you've got to be open to it. And you've got to want to understand the mission. Um, that's vital for me. If you're in the team and you're not, you're not willing to understand the mission or you don't understand the mission, it's, it's not going to last very long for what, you. So. What's the mission? Uh, ultimately, our mission is, um, well, we've got our business mission then I've got my personal mission, you know. So yeah. the, the well, I suppose it's, it's both the same really, but. The, the, the goal is for us um, to be the best that we absolutely can be. Yeah. Every guest leave wanting to come back. You know, we want to do something incredibly unique and special. Yeah. Go above and beyond in any way that we can. Um, cook amazing food. We want, um, obviously, a fully sustainable restaurant, fully booked every day. That's the, that's the mission, <laughs> uh, as it is for all of us, of course. Yeah. Um, but I want to build a, and this is, I suppose, this is, this is our mission as a whole, but also a very personal mission to me is, um, I want to, um, and I'm saying it now on camera, so I've definitely got to stick to it, but <laughs> I know I've said it, but it's been a, a, a not a dream, but a, a mission is to create an army of exceptional talent. And, you know, as, and as, as all of them are growing, which they are, I mean, if you look at the, so we have like a, they're called appraisals, but you know, we, we, we're talking with a team all day, every day. We spend hours with everybody. Right. So yeah. we know everybody inside and out, but essentially what I do is. Um, and I do it 
personally every six months with every single member of the team. I sit down with them and we look at your strengths, we look at your weaknesses, we look at where you're at, what you're, and ultimately what you, what you want to be doing. So you might say, okay, look, I want to be head waiter. Okay, cool. We have a very, very frank uh, conversation <laughs> as to what your strengths are and also what your weaknesses are and what you, you know, the opportunities there for everybody. I want everybody to have op an opportunity, everybody. Um, and that works. I mean, if you look at Andrew, our restaurant manager, mm. he's, you know, he's gone senior waiter, head waiter, assistant manager. He's now restaurant manager. Behind him, Hannah, senior waiter, head waiter, assistant manager. Behind Hannah, Lauren, junior waiter, senior waiter, head waiter. Behind Lauren, two or three people all pushing for that next head waiter role and will continue to grow. My personal mission is, you know, when we get ourselves to a stage where I feel that we're, we're consistently, consistently on the up, just consistently on the up, um, you know, we'll look at opening a second restaurant, for example. And at that point, we'll be saying, right, okay, you, 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 and you, let's go, we're going to open it. Hit your targets and we'll bring you into the company. Mm. I want to one day give the people that have got us to where we are um, a, a percentage of the company, essentially. You know, mm. not, not for any money. We don't need any finances, just hard work, loyalty. And that's where, for me, that's where it gets really exciting because, um, or I would be incredibly excited if I was a youngster uh, coming to work at the Greyhound because the opportunities are so big because it's, you know, ultimately it's myself and Marguerite, right? Next, the next place that we open, if if we have a member of staff that say, mm. "No, I've always dreamt of having the best coffee shop in the country," all right, let's do it. Set your name on it, mm. earn it. Let's do yeah. it together. Oh, you know, I want to have my own restaurant. I want to have an eight table fine dining restaurant. I want to get my stars. Okay, let's do it. You know, oh no, I want to have a pub that does fish and chips, but you know, by the river. Okay, let's do it. I want to be an executive chef. I want to be an ops director. I want to have the cool. We'll do it. But ultimately, I want to bring people into the company. I mean, I'm not Jesus. I understand that. <laughs> I understand that that's good for us as well, right? Like, I, you know, I understand that's that's a, that's it's good for yeah. you know, it's a good good business model. But I'm really passionate about it. About develop developing. Honestly, people, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I think about it every day. Yeah, and that in they they then in turn inspire me to do better. The team, because yeah. I want to do it for them. And when I see them work hard, I want to, you know, I I, I must I must achieve. This is like a must for me yeah. in my life. I must achieve it. I want to see them do really well. I want to see our, you know, our head chefs become chef patrons. I want mm. to see our restaurant managers become general managers and then part owners. I, I really want to see that. Um, and that, that excites me. Um, and you asked me a question and I've gone completely well, off. Uh, it was oh, the three non-negotiables. There you go. So non-negotiables. So first, don't go on. Next one. Next one. Two more, first yeah. first non-negotiable is just don't go on. No. <laughs> no. Um, so first non-negotiable was, um, did I even tell it you was what believe in the mission. I believe yeah, in the you, mission. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> As the mission, don't don't and talk And then too I, much. I'm sorry, it was my fault because I said, "What's the mission?" And so oh, Amy, we've covered the mission. Amy, you're asking all these questions. I know. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and then the next two non-negotiables. Um, uh, second non-negotiable is um, professional, not personal. Okay. Absolutely non-negotiable yeah. for me. You have to have a professional mindset, not a personal one. Something something goes wrong. Look, just you know, take criticism. Yeah, just just it's professional. You're there yeah. to learn. You're there to develop. The person more, you know, more senior, more senior than you has earned it. Is there for a reason? Trust me, please. I wouldn't put somebody in a position if they they didn't earn it. They haven't done it. Um, they know what they're doing, and um, you know, yeah. Listen, keep it professional. Don't. I say to the team quite often. You know, I'm probably going to offend a lot of people by saying this, but you know, I, I passionately believe it. Um, look at David's face. He's wondering what I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, if you if you're making a mistake time and time again, and we're in the midst of service, and it's high pressure, and it's all mm. kind of look, just take the 10 second hit. Just take the 10 seconds of look, look, Amy. This is not good enough. You've been shown five times. Mm -hmm. Are you all right? Are you tired? Do you want to go sit down for 10 minutes? Like, what's going on? You know, no. yeah, what's happening? <laughs> like, let's go. Like, you, you want we've got guests here. Yeah, you want a coffee? <laughs> we have guests here that are spending a lot of money. Um, yeah. You know, they, we have, they have high expectations and rightly so. This is our job. This is your time. Let's go. Yeah, cool. You're right. Sorry. Yeah, cool. We talk about it later, right? 10 seconds. Or, and that's, that's how we operate, right? The restaurant up the road, maybe, but, you know, they might be sitting down on bean bags and drinking beetroot juices and talking about, you know, oh, let's talk about, you know, every time something like that occurs, it's like 20 minutes. Yeah, it's true though, isn't it? It's like, oh yeah, let's have a chat about it. Well, what I really didn't like was um, that moment, you know, when the starter forks and the starter knives, um, they ran out and then basically you asked me to get some more, but I didn't like your tone. Jeez, like seriously, get a grip, you know, like, 
have a decaf cappuccino with oat milk, <laughs> whatever. Um, you know, let's let's just let's get real for a second. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's important for me. Yeah. <laughs> be just be professional. Like we haven't because the restaurant around the corner might be working in that manner, that's fine. Every time something like that happens, and there is a million things that we have to get right a day. A million, right? Every time there is a conversation like yeah. that for them, that's 20 minutes. Mm. Well, for us, it's 10 seconds. Well, so for me, they're 20 minutes behind us. Let's just do it in 10 seconds. If we do it the other way around and they're doing it in 10 seconds, which I know a lot of great restaurants are, and we're spending 20 minutes talking about, you know, oh God, who cares? You know, just learn from it, move on. Mm. We're going to be 20 minutes behind them. We're going to yeah. be in our, in our personal careers, as a business, as a restaurant. No. So that's my second non-negotiable. Hope that answers it. Um, <laughs> and my third non-negotiable, where are we? So understand the mission. Um, understanding the mission. Professional, professional not personal. personal. Um, and following up. I cannot stand people that say they're going to do something and not do it. Mm. Mm. Oh, honestly. Like just in life, actually, I just I just hate those kind of people. I just I I actually I actually have a hate. Is that bad? Um, I really hate them. Uh, yeah, you'll do that. Yeah. No, you won't. They're just copying you off, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can do that. Yeah, I'm sure. You, I'm sure you can. Will you? Um, yeah, you know, I, I, that's that's a problem for me. I, I really have a problem with that. Yeah, no, I'll get that done by twelve o'clock tonight. We all know you won't. So just don't, just don't say it. Just don't say it. Um, so yeah, don't say you're going to do something and not do it. It's true. If somebody says something to me like that, I normally think, oh, they won't do it. Yeah. Actually, and I'm surprised if they remember. But how bad is that? I know. I would absolutely. It's human nature. I isn't would it? hate yeah. it if somebody thought that about me. Yeah. yeah. I truly would. If I said to somebody, yeah, I'll get that done, it would, it would absolutely break my heart if I, if I then found out they walked away thinking he won't get it done. That's also because of sort of my work ethic. Like if I say I'm going to do something, I will do it. 100%. Mm. Three o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the afternoon. I don't care. If I've said I'll do something, it will be done. Facts. And I think that's why I probably, it's a non-negotiable for me. Because if that's how I'm working, that's how you should be working mm. as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you don't get a successful person who, who says they're going to do something and then they don't do it. It's, it's good, good advice, isn't it? I love asking that question because <laughs> I, I know I've said this before, but every guest has been so different. And I've gone, yeah, that is a non-negotiable. I've gone, gosh, we should write these down, shouldn't we? It's non-negotiables. We're we are gonna recording have different- it. It's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but So, so Daniel, brilliant. tell us about your Thank current you. business. You told us a bit about it already, but... Uh... Uh, yeah, so um, Modern British Food. Yeah. Uh, we are located in Beaconsfield, in Buckinghamshire. It's an old coaching inn. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't do rooms now. Uh, so we have, as I said, um, we have seven tables downstairs for dining. Nine tables upstairs uh, for dining. Um, beautiful bar area. Guests can come in just for a drink or a nibble. Predominantly, guests come for dining. Uh, but we do have a beautiful bar area. In the summer, we do have lots of guests that will come in for a drink because we have a beautiful drinking terrace. And then we also have six tables outside for, for dining on our new decking. Um, oh, lovely. Yeah, it's really cool. Mm, it's really cool. Nice. Well, you're going to come over soon. So yeah. you'll see it. Uh, then, of course, that overlooks the garden. Where, as I said earlier, you know, we're having a huge... Um, at the moment, we're having a huge, um, it, we've made a huge investment into the garden. We want within the next five years, 50% of all the fruits, veg and herbs actually grown on site. Um, loving it because the, the chefs are taking a real interest. You know, even the, the, the young commies, they're, they're really interested to see what we're growing. And So I'm excited for that. Definitely. Yeah. We, we've got like a new greenhouse as well being put in. So we're going to do all our own micro herbs. We've got a, um, a compost station so we can try and be more, more sustainable and put it back into the garden. And, so that's really cool and exciting. Um, yeah, amazing team. We're a family. We truly are. Um, we have a lot of work to do. Long way to go. Um, that's all part of the journey. That's what, that's what drives me personally anyway. And yeah. I think it's safe to say for the team as well, it drives them. Um, and then, of course, when you start to see little bits of success and little bits of what you've worked on actually come, come, come to fruition, it's, uh, it's an amazing feeling when you do that with, with the people that you love working with. So, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 us. That's the great. Is there anything that you'd like to ask us? Um, yeah. So when you um, obviously, you, I, I think I understand the the reasons behind wanting to do this podcast, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which I think is amazing, and and thank you from everybody. Genuinely, of uh, I know my my team I frequently watch um, watch watch on YouTube, um, and it's very very helpful and very interesting. Um, 
was this something that you, you spoke about? Because obviously I know you worked together for quite some time as well. Was this something you spoke about doing one day, thinking this would actually be really good for us as an industry? Because I do think we need more like mm-hmm. this. I do think that people need to hear more and, and see more, especially, yeah. especially for the younger generation as well, to hear what other people have done. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think the inspiration came um, from wanting others to understand what we do and, and, and the actual you know, customer service is a great thing. Um, and you don't see it that often, not just in our industry. I think it's really important for businesses. And there's yeah. a lot of attention on chefs and what they do. Mm. And if you open a restaurant, everybody wants to know who the chef is and who designed the restaurant, all these things. But the real important thing is actually who's going to look after the customers. Yeah. Um, that is really what it is, is the most important that nobody seems to want to talk about. Yeah, 100%. Um, and I'm in my own little world where we try and do our own level of mm. customer service. And we thought, Let's talk to industry leaders and see what we can learn from them to try to improve and also inspire others uh, and help our customers understand what we do as well. Because, you know, I, you know, I think a customer asked me, you know, what I did for a day job. And I was like, well, I'm here all day. What do you think I do? I don't just turn up and it just happens. And Incredible. there's a lot of work that goes Incredible. into what we do. So then perhaps what Educating we do. Educating yeah, customers. We, a little bit, yeah. Uh, mm. Help them understand, you know, the amount of work, effort, and passion that actually makes it happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's amazing. Absolutely, I think I think we've all had uh, in you know because we, we we as a group we've eaten out a lot, but you've all had those uh, moments in restaurants where the evening has just been perfection, and you just walk away going, "Well, I'm going to remember that the rest of my life," and uh, I think that that is an enormous amount of, of dedication hard work organization to to just uh, the training that goes into it um and just the consistency to to get that on a table is just uh, unbelievable and i don't think there's many industries that have to have that kind of perfection to get no. it right yeah and that's what's uh, really exciting when you do mm. get it right because i think uh, i think as you know as a server you feel those moments so you're talking about mm. the magic when a customer leaves you go yeah nailed it you can feel it you know mm-hmm. so that you know i don't think they really realize that you're just as excited as them 100%, about it 100% you know yeah. uh, so and that's what makes people so passionate yeah. about it Absolutely. so um and sharing that with everybody is I'm um, like like-minded people going. Oh, I'm not the only one out there. You yeah. know, no, <laughs> there's lots of us, yeah. and we all feel this way. And and maybe people don't want to talk about it as well because, like you said, there's a bit of stigma going. Oh, I'm a waiter. Yep. I definitely. mean, how how to put per, a person in a box? Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah, I remember. Waiter I was, can mean so much. What David you just know? said, you know, what do you do during the day? I remember when uh, <laughs> I was I was in London serving um, some incredible food. Um, to say the least, table of table of two um, it was a big, big, big chap, and he said, uh, "He said, oh, young man, you're rather. I think it was. A, I think it was. They spent whatever a thousand pounds for two for two of them. He said, oh, young man, you're rather good, aren't you?' I said, "Oh, thank you very much, sir.' He said, "Yeah, sir. So what are you doing when you're uh, when you're older? Are you at university?" <laughs> I was like, "I'm 24. I work 80 hours a week." Study for every hour after that. I'm probably on more money than a junior doctor. What do you think? I'm, what do you think I am? I, mm. Yeah, it's, it's it's quite. But I don't think I don't think it's down to rudeness. I think it's just ignorance. No, no. You know, I think it's just ignorance. No. People just don't know. No, and that's what's. Um, yeah, no. and that's that's why I'm so pleased that you're doing this. So mm. thank you again. Quick cry round. <laughs> Yeah. I'll keep it quick. I'll keep it quick. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I don't think you can. It's my fault, though. I I'll keep try. asking I'll questions try. based okay. on what you're Go saying. Ahead. Sorry, I'll, Be- I'll try best, not. Best service yeah. ever received. Doesn't have to be a restaurant, but you know. Two weeks ago, Medler. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> Stop with that. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, genuinely, it was, that was very, very good. Very, very good. Yeah. Um, so thank you again. Um, it was a, a wonderful, wonderful lunch. Um, do you know, uh, oh, quick fire, I'm going to have to speed this up, but. Um, I, I, there are many, many restaurants where I can think of where I thought, wow, mm-hmm. the service was just fantastic. I mean, I could literally name 10 off the top of my head, Medler including, by the way. Um, just amazing. But all for different reasons. The Ritz being nice and traditional. Uh, Cabot Park, I'm quite a fan of that because um, mm-hmm. I think it's quite, it's very luxurious, but actually it's very relaxed. Um, yeah, Medler, I love the comfort. I love, there's a million restaurants that I love the service. But one thing that really stands out for me um, was when, obviously, we opened the Greyhound. Um, we spent the whole year refurbing. We had to close after 12 weeks, as you know. 
uh, because of lockdown. And I, I'll never forget the um, the local council, the chap who we spoke to initially mm. to talk about all our business rates and set everything up and da 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 da. Um, we we sort of just as we went into lockdown, everyone was talking about oh the, the the grants this and the schemes for this and all the rest of it. Obviously, we had no idea. There was so much going on. I was like, oh, I don't know. I'll just, maybe I'll just email them, see what happens. So I emailed, um, I emailed the council. I haven't spoken to them for a year. I've had no reason to. Email the council, and I got a and it's, it sent an email back saying we'll respond to you within eight to ten working days. I thought, yeah, obviously, well, whatever. <laughs> um, and yeah. then I think it was I think it was about forty five minutes later, I received an email from the same man that I spoke to a year before. So personalized. This is the council, right? Saying, uh, you know, hi, Dan and Marguerite. Um, really sorry to hear what's happened. I hope you're both okay, um, et cetera, et cetera. Look, this is what you need to do. Put down all these links. Helped, 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 helped. Anything you need, feel free to ask. I just thought, wow. Honestly, the fact that he, obviously I didn't put Marguerite's name in the email. Why would I, you know? The, the fact that he remembered who we were, mm. what we're, you know, what we're doing. You know, we're independent. We're, we're, wow. Uh, I, and that really stood out for me. Really yeah, for me. yeah. That's uh, how it made you feel, right? Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah. That's yeah. Important to realise it's not just restaurants that have amazing customer service, Absolutely. is it? It's uh, quite a few different jobs and occupations. Yeah. Um, anyone in the industry that inspires you? Many. Um, yeah, many. My team definitely, um, and I truly mean that. They inspire me to do better and do the yeah. best for them that I can. Um, Growing up, Gordon Ramsay was, was a huge inspiration to me. I have to say, you know, a lot of people say, but you're not a chef. So yeah, I know, but his, his drive, his passion for, mm-hmm. for what it is that he does, uh, mm-hmm. his knowledge, his skills, um, the way he manages. Um, I know that's probably another podcast talking point on how he, you know, how he, um, how he can manage. Um, but I, but I, <laughs> yeah. I, I get it. I totally yeah. get it. Um, and I think that, yeah, I just, yeah, tr- truly, mm. truly inspirational um, and for what he's achieved. So mm. truly inspirational. Um, yeah, there's many, there are so many in the industry. Obviously, you know, Jean-Claude, I know who you had mm. on um, very recently. Obviously, he's, um, you know, he's been a, a, an amazing mentor to me and still is today. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're closer than ever now, actually, um, which says a lot about a person, I think. I think when you work for somebody and then when you leave to yeah. then, you know, um, I spoke to him this morning, for example. Um yeah you know, when you then become close with somebody. So that, that's, that's a good indication of, of the man yeah. he is, actually. Um, so yeah, Jean-Claude, how, how JC was in the, in the dining room um, was very, very inspiring. Very, mm-hmm. very inspiring how he was with guests. Um, you know, I mean, he could literally go up to a table and you know, he doesn't need to speak in English, but the guests would be like, wow. <laughs> yeah, he just had this presence. It's magical. Yeah. It's really magical. He's unique, isn't he? Absolutely mm. phenomenal, yeah. yeah. Um, and that, that really inspired me. I thought, wow, that's, 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 that's amazing. Um, yeah, you know, I, 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 you know, I have to say, you know, Rob Rose at Hospital Road as well. Um, definitely one of the sharpest people I've worked with in the dining room. Yeah. Like, no question, he's sharp. I mean, mm. really, really sharp. Um, saw everything. You move so quick, but you'd never know. Um, yeah, so he was incredibly, incredibly sharp. So, so you imagine uh, when I was at Hospital Road, for example, I had obviously there was there was Claire in the kitchen, one of the best chefs in the world, uh, absolutely phenomenal. I think got Rob next to me, um, as, as obviously all of them my bosses, but Rob next to me, um, who's just like I'm saying, just mm-hmm. incredibly sharp and just, mm-hmm. and then Jean Claude to the left of me, um, who's this just amazing maitre d'. I mean, you can imagine, it was just phenomenal. It was amazing for me. It was an amazing experience. So they all inspire me. And still today they inspire me. Yeah. They're all doing extremely well. Um, yeah, they're, they're amazing. Amazing. Big inspirations. Favourite wine? Um, boring, probably. Burgundy, I think. Um, yeah, any Chardonnay, young or old. I'm, I'm, yeah, Pinot Noir. Burgundy. Burgundy yeah. Burgundian wines, yeah. Love my Burgundy. A book that inspires you? Easy. Uh, I'm not a massive reader. Um, and if I am, it needs to be industry. Otherwise, I just can't focus, to be honest. It has to be something hospitality, in hospitality, um, or leader, or, or leadership. Um, I would say uh, Nicholas Lander, Art of the Restaurateur. I, I've, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's, it might not be the most complex book in the world, but we were on holiday and Marguerite will read like, you know, seven books on her Kindle in about three hours. Whereas I'm like, <laughs> I'm sitting on the third page of a case for her, like, 
you know, <laughs> just trying to get over That's my nine to five hour David, week, you know. Um, seven books. I, I, seven I read books. a lot, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you read a lot? A oh, lot. gosh. Yes, um, big reader. And I picked up The Art of the Restaurateur and yeah, I just, I just flew through it. I just, mm. oh my God, I loved it. I felt every single chapter, mm. every single, yeah. I really that's that's my favorite book yeah. Yeah. have you read that one I have yes oh, well done. <laughs> uh, plate of food best plate of food um, uh, best plate of food off the top of my head I would say I'm sure a lot of people will say this but uh, when Pierre Kaufman had Kaufman's mm-hmm. under the Barclay um, see quite a few years ago now his um, souffle, pistachio souffle, pistachio ice cream, dark chocolate. That's still in my mind. And that was a long time ago. So I have to say that because I still, <laughs> I still think about it. Every time I have yeah. a souffle, yeah. every time I eat a souffle, even today, I do like a souffle a lot. Every time I have a souffle, even today, in the back of my mind, that's still there. Can, you, the best, can you believe that? The best dishes are the ones you remember like it was yesterday. Yeah. That's mad, isn't it? That's mm. it. If, you, if I had a souffle right now, it's just mm. subconscious, I wouldn't obviously yeah. tell anybody. I'd look like a maniac. <laughs> Pierre Kaufman. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd just look nuts, wouldn't I? <laughs> um, but I would be thinking of the Pierre Kaufman uh, souffle. Yeah. Just, just, that's when, I guess that's when you know it's a yeah, bloody good dish, right? Yeah, so, that's when you know. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, what's your easy meal at home? What's your go-to? Um, I... Oh, no judgment, by the way. Yeah, this is going to sound <laughs> awful, but I'm really lucky. Marguerite does all the cooking at home, oh. genuinely, and she makes sure I'm well fed. Um, mm. Doesn't matter how many hours we work, she will still find the time throughout the day to make me an amazing meal every single day. Genuinely healthy, really you are healthy. Very lucky. I am. You? Um, <laughs> and she and, does an amazing pairing of wine with it as well, I bet. Yeah. For her, not for me. I haven't earned that yet. Um, but I have to say, oh, God, this is going to sound awful, but. Again, the team will be like, why didn't you say that? Because it's true. Um, if I'm ever... <laughs> obviously, we live next to the restaurant, right? God, this is going to sound so bad. We live next to the restaurant. And um, <laughs> if Marguerite's away, like, for example, for example, she's recently... She's in the middle of doing her wine diploma. And she went over to Madeira, to all these different vineyards. Amazing. Um, so it's me and our little dog um, at home. And I'm not joking. The staff, they literally... I f- feel like they're, like, babysitting me. So, like, Marguerite leaves them a list of instructions. I'm not kidding. And I walk in. I'm not joking. I walk in. And um, I'll never forget it. The, the kitchen, it was, I think it was James that came to me. And it was quite, it was like nine o'clock in the morning. And I've walked in. And uh, he's come over to me. And he said, uh, it was James. He's come over to me. He said, uh, Dan, you got a minute? I said, yeah, of course. Everything all right? Said, I'm the boss. I'm the owner. I'm like, yeah, everything, everything all right? Yeah, everything good? He went, yeah. Well, what's your meal plan for today? <laughs> what? We've got a 50 cover lunch and a 50 cover dinner. Don't worry about me. No, no, no. You need to eat. <laughs> Okay, so to be honest with you, all my meals are easy because I never make them. So <laughs> it's either the guys, it's either the guys. But I've got to say as well, there is so much, there's so much love in the team. It's yeah. not. Oh, I, I actually have. I don't know how you feel about this, David, but I actually have a. And I think this is because obviously we've been in the industry our whole lives. Like I understand it. I, I never ever want to be that person ever that walks in the kitchen. It's like, you know, we've all had it where there's been the owner of the restaurant and he comes in with 10 of his friends and never pays the bill and then orders everything because I own the restaurant. It's like, that's that's not cool, man. That's that's yeah. that's not cool. You're not part of the team. You're not part of... And they stay till three o'clock in the morning when, you know, the next day, you know, half the team are, are off ill or off on holiday and they, it's a really early start and they just have no... So, you know, no understanding. I never wanted to be that person who walks in the kitchen. Mm. It's like, oh, make me this, make me that. Never. So to the point where genuinely the guys, when I go into the kitchen, they ask me, even the youngsters, you know, it gets to 11 o'clock at night. Dan, have you eaten today? You know, if it's been a long day and Marguerite's not around, they'll ask me, like, look, you know, we've got a little bit of venison left over. Would you like me to do something up for you? It's really sweet. Like, it's, it's genuinely, and I, I'm, and you know what? This sounds ridiculous, but it tastes so much better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you know that someone has genuinely thought, oh, you know what? I don't know if Dan's eating today. I'm, I'm talking oh. about Sam, you know, he's, he's our 18, 18, 19 year old apprentice. He's got one hell of a future with us, I can assure you. Um, to have that mindset at that age and think, oh, Dan, I've seen Dan work all day today with us. He's been here first thing in the morning till last thing at night. Maybe he hasn't eaten. I know, I know I've heard through for the guys, when Marguerite's not <laughs> around, he probably hasn't eaten anything. Have you eaten, Dan? No, I haven't. Okay, I'll bring some venison up to the office. Mate, thanks so much. What a, what a lovely thing. So all my meals are easy. How does that sound? <laughs> <laughs> if not, if, if, if I'm at home on my yeah. own, a Chinese takeaway. <laughs> Chinese takeaway. Which doesn't taste as good as medicine, but it is what it is. <laughs> Daniel, it's been great listening yeah. to you. Thank you thank very much. You Bless very you. Thanks much. so much for having very me, guys. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you for listening to Drive for Service podcast. Follow us on Instagram at Medler Chelsea and make sure that you like and subscribe for future episodes.